Hello everyone, my name's Alistair and welcome back. This is going to be a slightly shorter video than some that I've done, but I still think it's a pretty cool subject and a really great demonstration of how far world building technology has come in the last five years. Now for some context. I'm a game developer and I'm using Unreal Engine to build my game. So far, it's been an amazing piece of software to work in. And among many other cutting edge features, one of my favorite things about the software is the way it lets you see your work come to life so quickly. However, this is a big game I'm building and I can see the whole thing in my head, but it is taking months and months to lay it out into code and into experiences. And I am still nowhere close to being finished, which can be a problem because when you're undertaking large creative projects, you can quickly find yourself getting drained if you don't take care of your own mind. So this week, I'm going to tell you the story of an incredibly satisfying piece of work that I took on for this game, using a piece of software that everyone can get their hands on pretty easily, Blender. So let's begin. Now, I started this project because I was curious to see how quickly you could get the project from Unreal Engine into Blender. I mean, they both use the same type of textures, and when you build things in Unreal Engine, it has to be pretty optimized anyway. So I used Unreal Engine's very convenient export all button that puts out an entire level that I've spent a long time building into an FBX. And then I just imported it into an empty scene in Blender. It was unbelievably straightforward. Now it did come with a lot of extra data that Blender can't really read. So I had to spend some time deleting that first. So I spent a couple of minutes deleting things like H lords, all of the various lights that had come over, and a number of empty objects that would have been blueprint containers inside Unreal Engine. And now for the most time consuming part of this process, reconnecting all of the textures into materials. Now inside Unreal Engine, I use relatively complex shaders and packed textures, and Blender can't read those. So I had to bring in all of the various textures that I'm using back into this Blender scene to reassociate them back with the materials that they should be inside. It took a bit of time, but once it was done, it was fairly straightforward and we had some fantastic materials that already looked good inside Blender. And then once I got bored of doing this, I started firing up a few renders to start seeing some progress in the scene so I could start playing around with the lighting. And now I'm going to show you a small little sequence that shows that process of building up the lighting and the shot and some more of the materials. Now, I remember, and I'm not that old, a few years ago when an average render frame would take from anywhere between two hours and two days. The thing that absolutely blew me away about this short exercise was just how quick it was to render the project. Now, I was using GPU rendering and I was using AI denoising, which is a relatively new feature that's come into Blender. But doing that allowed me to get under two minutes per frame as opposed to two hours plus which was absolutely amazing. And following that, 
I had a go with a few of the other work in progress areas for the game as well, just to see how it would look. After that, I started dragging in older Unreal Engine projects, like this city, to see how that would render out. And, sensing a bit of an addiction coming on, I had to circle back to the reason that I started doing this in the first place. You see, I originally started doing this because I needed to find a way to create things like animated artwork and short videos for computer screens and other monitors inside the game. For example, this city set on the moon. And after that, I started seeing the potential in this technique to do other things as well, like promotional images. So, with that renewed focus, I allowed myself one more small experiment to look into something that I noticed when I was doing this test. Now, the way I've been making these images so quickly is I have been using a relatively low sample rate to render out, and then I've been using AI denoising, specifically optics AI denoising, to finish off the frame and smooth it out. So what's rendering above is a relatively high sample frame, about 512 samples, which is then using AI denoising just to finish it off. It takes about five minutes to render and it looks pretty realistic unless you get too close. And now we're going to switch to a super low sampled frame and see what AI denoising tries to do to the image when it just doesn't have the data to interpret. And this is running in real time now. So you can see it really is running quickly because it is such low sampling. And look at that blurriness, it's almost painted. The AI is really having to make some leaps to try and figure out what was meant to be behind all of that rendered noise. I was super curious to see what would happen if you rendered out an animation using this super low sampling technique. Would it look kind of cool, almost like it was painted? Or would it just look terrible and sickening? And I can show you the results of that now. It kind of feels like it's one part pretty painted animation, one part Vaseline mixed with dust on the lens, and one part mm, just kind of blurry. I still had a lot of fun doing it though, and I think I'll have a play with some interior shots as well at some point in the future. But for now, it's back to work. I've got a lot of game to make, and hopefully quite a few videos as well during the process. Now, I'd like to make more videos about the game that I'm making, but I also want to talk about virtual reality in general more. Every day when I read the news about VR, more and more of the promise of early virtual reality is starting to look like it might happen in the next few years. And I want to explore that. I'm exploring it in my game in a lot of ways, but I want to explore that as well in the real world and what it means. So, if you like playing VR games, making VR games, or just think that tech is absolutely fascinating, maybe you'll consider subscribing. And I'll try to bring you the old cool video in the future. And if you want to know more about the game that I'm making, stick around as well. I'll be doing some more videos about it in the future, and I'll tell you a lot more about what the game is and what you'll get to do in it. But for now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.